Welcome back guys today to uh, Vape Reviews and More. Um, today we're going to do a build video, just a simple little build just to show you guys how to get started. Um, if you're advanced in building and you've done it a lot and you know what you're doing, uh, this video is probably going to be rather boring to you. Um, if you're just starting, this is a good little build, pretty simple. We're just going to use a uh, 24 gauge Canthal A1. Um, we're going to just make a simple little dual build here in this uh, Doge V2. This is an authentic from Kanger Vapes. Um, the things you're going to need, I use a uh, old ohm reader that I have. It's broken. It doesn't work. Um, I use it for a build deck, so I have something to build on. But you're going to need a working ohm reader. You need a pair of clippers. You're going to need uh, some pliers. And you're going to need a couple different screwdrivers. Uh, you're going to need one for tightening your post screws and then I use we're gonna use uh, this one right here I'm not for sure on the size of it exactly I think it's a uh, two millimeter precision screwdriver another thing you're gonna need is you're gonna need some cotton whatever you prefer to use um, I have organic Japanese cotton here I get at my local brick and mortar vape shop so let's go ahead and get into it first thing you're gonna need is you're going to need two pieces of 24 gauge Canthal, preferably about six to eight inches long. And then we're going to go ahead, and it's pretty simple from there. All we're going to do is uh, take our screwdriver that we're going to wrap on. We're going to go ahead and uh, zoom in here a little bit. And uh, we're going to go ahead and just, I am left handed, so for right handed people, it's a little bit different. Uh, my buddy, he's right-handed, so he wraps a little different than I do. But I just take it and I lay it over the screwdriver like so. I grasp the screwdriver with my finger and thumb right about there. So that way I'm holding onto it tightly. I have a nice snug fit. And then from there, we're just going to grab it. We're going to go ahead and begin. We're going to start with one wrap right along the edge, just so we're tight. You can go nice and slow. We're going to do seven wraps on this. Should come out pretty nicely. Get them as close as possible, but if they're not perfect, that's no big deal. You know, it's a good coil, easy to do. Doesn't have to be exact. So here we have. We have our six wraps. We're going to go ahead and do one more. And that's our seven. We're going to go ahead and pull that lead out. Straighten it up. I like to take my fingernails and press. We're going to take this lead that's wrapped around the screwdriver from holding it. We're just going to go ahead and unwrap that around the back. Pull it around like so. And then as you can see, right there, if it'll focus, try and get this autofocus to work. There we go. And as you can see, we got one over, one under. And you always count your wraps with your leads going out the back. So you count your wraps, you know, you got three, four, five, six, seven wraps. And we're just going to kind of straighten it up here. And then this is where I like to take the pliers. I mean, this is all on your own. I like to take the pliers. I like to grab a hold of one of the leads. And just give it a nice snug pull. That is going to unwind it, so give it a little bit of a twist. And then I reverse hands, or switch hands. We're going to go ahead and grab it with the other lead. Go ahead and grab the other lead with the pliers. We give it a nice little tug. That just kind of tightens up your coil. Later on, it makes it a little easier to pull the hot spots out. But that's our coil. That's that's pretty much it. And we're going to take this. Obviously, we have one lead longer than the other. So we're going to go ahead and just trim that longer lead. We're just going to go ahead and snip it off. A little bit shorter than the other one. Like so. 
go ahead and take that wire. We'll go ahead and get rid of that. And that's our one coil. Now we're going to just do the exact same thing for our second coil. So I'm going to go ahead and jump ahead and we'll... Uh, we now have uh, both coils made up. Um, they're both seven wrap. I call these a, uh, I guess you'd call these a macro coil or they're borderline macro micro because of the screwdriver I used. Obviously macro, they're bigger, micro, they're smaller. These aren't that small, so I guess these would be macro coils. Um, they're pretty nice. Like I said, seven wraps. So we're going to go ahead and take one of these off here. We're going to go ahead and grab our RDA. And the thing I like to do, I like to pay attention to where the leads are going. I like to take it and the lead that's going under, I like to put it in the center post. So that way when you're doing your cotton, you're not trying to fight to go around this lead on the outside. It's pretty easy. So we're just going to insert our lead into the center post, the longer one, shorter one into the negative post. We're just going to slide that right on through. I like to get them pretty flush as best as I can. I don't know if you guys can see that. And there we go. We're going to get it as close as we can and just hold it with our finger. And I like to take this lead here and just make sure that they're not stuck up. So I like to take that lead, hold it with my finger like so. So that way, if you guys can see down in there, you can see how that screw is. Well, if you get it stuck to one side like that, where it's stuck up against the side in the hole, it's going to get trapped in between the side of the screw and the post. And you don't want that because it's not going to actually get snug in there. It's not going to get tight. It's going to be kind of loose in there and you're going to get a bad connection. Your ohms are going to jump around. Or for you mechanical guys, you may even short something out. You never know. It's just better. I like to push it over with my thumb while I'm holding it. And then go ahead and grab our flathead screwdriver. We're going to go ahead and screw down the negative post first. And I'll explain why here in a second. Mainly because we're doing a dual coil. So you're not going to tighten down that center post. Because you got to put another lead in there. So we're just going to snug this down. Yeah, it looks like I'm really wrenching on it, but I'm not. I'm just trying to get snug and a little quarter turn. You just don't want no wiggleness in it. So when you wiggle that, you should only have your positive lead moving. So now that that's in there, I'm going to go ahead and pull our screwdriver out and just let it back. So now we're going to go ahead and grab our other coil and slide it on our screwdriver. You always use your screwdriver that you built on. The screwdriver that you wrapped on, you're always going to use it. So that way, when you put it in there, you don't bend or distort your your um, your coil. You just want to make sure that everything stays the same way that you built it. So we're going to go ahead and push that through. So again, we're going to shove it in there as snug as we can, as close as we can to that post. And like I said, I'll explain that again here in a little bit why you do that once we get done tightening these up. So once again, I'm going to pull that post, that lead over with my finger. We're just going to crank her down. Like I said, this is Canthal. Um, it's pretty resilient. It's got some oomph to it, so you don't have to be as worried about snapping the leads off as you're tightening. But, as with anything, it can happen. Um, you never know. Uh, I have a Dark Horse RDA that loves to snap leads off if you over-tighten them, and it doesn't matter what kind of wire you're using. So there that is, that's what it should look like by now. Both negative leads have been tightened down. I'll go ahead and pull the screwdriver out. And we'll go ahead and uh, see if we can't get this to focus. But that's kind of what you're looking at. And the positive leads of the coils, they should be almost identical now. At there and there, we'll go ahead and give it a little just a little pinch to make sure they're both in there. You can grab the leads and pull on them and make sure they should be. They look about even. And I stress that. Make sure that your leads are even on both sides. Because if not, you're just going to have a pain in the ass on getting these things to heat properly and heat evenly and at the same time. You want them to heat 
identically the same as close as possible on both sides or else you're going to have one side that's going to dry out faster than the other one side's going to be hotter than the other and if you just even up the leads now makes it so much easier later so we're just going to go ahead and let those be don't stick no screwdrivers in them and i just tighten them down let them do what they're going to do since there's two leads in there you don't have to worry about them really getting pinched in between the uh sides of the screwdriver and the post um, the only time I have that problem is with smaller 28 um, up to 32 gauge wires. But this 24, it's thick enough, it takes up the room on the bottom of that post. So we're just going to snug that up, kind of like so. Now we're going to look at it here. Uh, yeah, everything looks nice. Looks good. Um, we're going to go ahead and zoom out and trim these leads and get to firing it. So here we go, um, we're going to go ahead and take our little clippers, you can get these anywhere, any local hardware store, I bought these at Harbor Freight for like a dollar or something, almost two bucks, so you can get these things anywhere, they're nice, they're, they're real small, they get in there, they're better than fingernail clippers. So I'm just going to get in here, I'm going to snip these negative leads off first, I like to leave a little bit to fold up, so that way I make sure they're snug in there and your coils ain't going nowhere when you're tightening, when you're adjusting your coils. So I leave just a little bit that I can bend up with that flathead screwdriver. So we're going to trim that. Now the tricky part. These puppies. You got to get in here and you got to get these perfect. So you want to get in there, snip it as close as you can. And watch it. When you snip these, make sure you got something around that you can pick all these little leads up with because... This can't though, sometimes you cut it and they just go flying. I like to take a magnet and rub it across my pliers and stuff so that way they're magnetized and they'll pick up all these little pieces of stick to it. We'll just snip that one. Be careful not to snip your leads on your coils. I've done that before. It's a pain in the ass. It sucks. So now we're just going to pick up all these little scraps. I, I hate to have them laying around. They like to stick me in the fingers. Okay, so now that that's done, here's where we're at again. That's what we're looking at. You see all them leads sticking out. We're just going to take us our flathead screwdriver. We're going to take these little leads. We're just going to pry them up. First, we'll go ahead and check our screws again because now that we've trimmed it, we may have cut some tension out. So we're going to check our screws, make sure they're all tight. Whoop. Make sure those are all tight, and then we'll take our screwdriver. I had to get a bigger one. I just dropped my other one. So, uh... We're going to take these leads, if you guys can see, we're just going to bend them up, like so. Bend them up out of the way. Just like, now they're bent up, they're out of the way. This one can probably be bent a little bit more. Like so. There we go. Now we're going to go ahead and check it again. I always stress, see how loose that is? Always stress, make sure your screws are tight. If they're not tight, you're not going to get a good connection. It's going to heat weird. Nothing. It's not going to work properly. So just stress, make sure this stuff is tight. Now we're going to take our screwdriver again. We're going to start with this outside edge. We're going to go ahead and grab our screwdriver. And we might go in the other way. Well, let's go ahead and start with this one. They're a little too angled. We're going to go ahead and start with this one. Shove the screwdriver through. Straighten it up. I like to pull it out and up. And I think I might have broke it. Yep, we broke that one. I don't know. Let's go ahead and check and make sure it's tight. Yeah, it's not tight. There we go, now it's tight. 
We're going to go ahead and just straighten it up, center it, put it where you want it, lift it up a little bit. These air holes on these uh, doges, they're pretty well right there with them holes, so you don't want to lift it too high. Just kind of get it as straight and level as possible. Angle it a little bit more. Now we'll go ahead and do the same to this side. Let's go ahead and make sure these leads are tight again because that side was not. Seems tight, so we're going to go ahead and go to town on it. We're going to go ahead and just give it a little twist. We'll go ahead and come in from this side. We're going to go ahead and give it a little pull and a push. And we're going to lift it up a little bit. Sorry guys if I'm working off camera. I'm not not able to really tell where the view angle is while I'm working here. Um, I have to keep checking the camera every so often. But that's about what we're looking for. We're going to go ahead and try and pull it away a little bit more. So we don't want it that close to the posts. So we'll go ahead and give it a little twist and a pull. And that's a little better. We'll go ahead and do the same thing to this side. Give it a little pull and a push. Like so. They look about good. So we're going to go ahead and check our screws again. Like I said, throughout the build, I always I check, double check, triple check, quadruple check. Always check these screws, make sure they're good. So now we're going to go ahead and pull it off of here, off this little build table that I got. I'm just going to go ahead and unscrew it. Set that aside. And go ahead and grab our ohm meter. Zoom out here for you guys. I'm going to turn that on. And we'll screw her in and see what she comes out to be. I'm hoping she's about a 2. She's at 2.1. Or 0.21 ohm, sorry guys, 0.2 ohm. We'll go ahead and turn it off, turn it back on, just check. 0 0.21, 0 0.22, right in there. That's a good place to be. Go ahead and shut it off. Pull it off. I like to fire on a mechanical mod. It's a little safer with a Sony VTC4 battery. That's what I got in there. For you guys that aren't familiar with batteries and everything that's a high drain high amp battery I believe they are 30 or 35 amp batteries which is more than enough we're just gonna pulse it As you can see, there's some hot spots in that one coil. We're going to go ahead and take our pliers. We're just going to pinch those out. Like so. Give this one a little pinch. Take our screwdriver that we built on. And go ahead and shove it in there. Make sure everything's staying the right size. But you didn't. Everything shrank. <laughs> You'll have that when you're building with these. They'll shrink. They'll move. They'll contract. That's fine. It's canthal. Get in there. Be careful. It can still be hot. So just be careful when you're touching it. Be smart. Use common sense. I mean, it doesn't take a rocket scientist to know that you just heated that up red hot. It's going to be hot. So go ahead and touch that one. Push it in. Wiggle it around a little bit. Right now you're just trying to get the hot spots out of it. You're trying to get it to heat up evenly. So we got one coil firing a little hotter than the other. So we're going to go ahead. Ooh. Battery got hot. We're going to go ahead and put this on the ohm reader again. Check it out. I think now we've got enough. 
I think we can throw it on a uh, regulated box mod. Not have to worry about messing it up. I'm go ahead and slam this back on the home reader, turn it on, screw it on there. Now she's ohming out at a 0.31 ohms. Y'all can see that, 0.31 ohms. So, your first cold reading, whenever you first fire a set of coils that you had built, predominantly it's going to be rather low compared to what you're actually building at. Um, so, just good reference. Check it. If it's too, too low, remember to be careful while firing it. That it's going to fire up real hot, so that's why you pulse it. You don't ever just stick it on a mech mod and hold the button down while you're trying to fire it for adjustment. You always want to be real easy, just pulse, 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 let it get up there to temp. Once it's up there, then you can go ahead and find the hot spots, pinch them out, and everything's good to go. Um, I know I'm not being very clear with them hot spots. Uh, what's happening is the coils are shorting from one point to another across that's why you get these hot spots and by pinching it you're just releasing that circuit you're um, making it the electricity flow freely through the coil rather than across the coil so when you see the hot spots basically the electric is arcing from one point in the coil to another so you want to pinch that so that way they're evenly heating now we're going to go ahead and we're going to I think we're going to go put this on our Segele 100 watt here. i got to take this other RDA off of it. I'm going to go ahead and slam that on there. See what it says it's reading is, and we'll go ahead and continue firing it and adjusting it on there. So, screw that on to the Segele. Screw it down nice and snug. Now that I've played with these screws again, like I said, I continually check them. Even after I have it all built up, I still check them. Just to be sure. See? A couple of them. That one was a little loose. So, like I said, it doesn't hurt to always check it. I had a guy come into a shop the other day. He was, uh, his, his, uh... Mod was jumping around on the ohms. He had a uh, regulated box mod like this, and his was jumping around on what the ohms were because most of them give you an ohm reading in here. And uh, like right there, it says 0.2 ohms was my last build. So if I fire it a couple times, oops, shut it off. I'm going to go ahead and turn this on with five clicks. And we're going to give her a little fire, 0.3 ohms. It's about right. We're going to go ahead and turn the power down a little bit. About 60 watts for firing. And they look good. They're heating from the center out. Everything looks all right. They're heating evenly. Uh, right there is what you want. You want them to fire from the inside out. So from the inside of the coil here. So from the inside of the coil right here out you want it to fire so inside out see that that's what you want so that's pretty much it on uh building so for all you guys out there who are just getting into drippers and rdas or the hell for this coil this is pretty good for like a k fun or a uh, kanger sub tank so if you're getting into the rebuildable tanks this is another good coil you can put in those and they will have tons of flavor. I actually have a sub tank, and this is what I ran in it for a long time. So now we're just going to take a piece of cotton. We're going to go ahead and grab our scissors. And we're going to just cut off a little piece of cotton. Um, rule of thumb is I normally make it about the same width as the coil. So if you just eyeball the coil, you know, that is it. So I'm going to go ahead and cut off. Just a little bit wider than what the actual coil is. I know most people, they like to split this stuff down the middle. They like to fold it in half and all them other things. Well, I don't mess with it. I just take the one end, kind of get as close as you can to the end because we're going to use this whole piece. We're going to use this whole piece right here for uh, both coils. So I like to be conservative. I don't like to waste. One reason a lot of people start vaping is not only to quit smoking, but because it's supposed to be cheaper. 
That's what everybody says. Oh, it's cheaper than smoking. Well, I guess if you're going an ego route and you're only buying juice and you're not doing this kind of stuff. Yeah, it probably is cheaper. But what you want, you want to feed it through. I go ahead and I make sure this one end is where I want it. So I usually go just slightly past the, the base right here. And then you want it snug to where you can pull your device, but you can't pull it out, but you can pull it with the force of your fingers. You know what I mean? You don't want it so tight that you, you bend the coils up trying to get the trying to get the cotton through, but you want it tight enough to where you should be able to pull your device over um, and not pull it out. <clears throat> so just firmly snug, I guess, is what you would call it. And then we're just going to take the other end here. And we're just going to trim it right about there. You see, I left a little gap between my scissors and the base. We're just going to trim it off. I got crappy scissors. And then we're just going to go ahead and even it up like so. And we'll go ahead and put it in the other side too before we stuff it down in there. So the same thing over here, except now we got a little bit smaller piece of cotton. So we're going to go ahead and pull it through. Get it about where we want it. Fluff up that end. That you had twisted, chewing off right before the twisted part, and that's it. That's your uh, cotton right there. Um, cotton, it's pretty well personal preference, whatever you feel like. I mean, you'll figure out little tricks and stuff to get it to wick properly, get it to wick a little better at lower ohm builds. That's pretty much it. That's my way. This is how I like to do it. So now we're just going to go ahead and take this end. I like to just poke it in, like so. Go ahead and get it down in there, and then I take my screwdriver and I just kind of flatten it out in the bottom. Same thing here, I bring it around. I bring this one around, and I kind of just stuff it in like so. And I make a little hole right here. The reason I put a hole in there is more airflow. I like a kind of airy feel. I still get good flavor. Some people don't. If they don't, you can close that up. You're still going to have all this surface area right here to get vapor off of. I just like that right there. It it seems to give me nice, cooler vape. I'm not one of the guys that like the hot or warm vapes. So once again, this side, we're just going to shove it in, get it folded under, just stick a screwdriver in there, flatten it out. This side, we're going to bring it around, shove it down. And voila, that's about it. That's pretty much it. Just gotta make sure it's in there. I like to make sure I'm covering most of the juice while I leave areas back here open. Right in here, I leave open down in there. Some guys like to cram some cotton down in there. I know, but hey, whatever. Like I said, personal preference, it's up to you. Whatever you want to do. And that's pretty much it. Now we're going to go ahead and juice it up. Pretty much get her nice and saturated. That cotton to soak every last little bit up. Now if at first, once you fire this coil, and you're vaping on it with this fresh cotton in there and a fresh coil, don't be discouraged if it's giving you a little bit of a weird taste. That's just virgin cotton. Cotton, it's going to give you a little bit of a weird taste at first until every little crevice of the cotton can get filled with juice. I know you're thinking, well, it's cotton. It's going to absorb it instantly. It's going to absorb it instantly. Well, you got to remember, it's kind of tight inside them coils. So give it a chance to get to its full soak potential. Go ahead and fire it. Let it draw up some. You can see right there. Vapor production, paper, vapor production is pretty high. It's got some nice production in there. We're going to go ahead and juice it up. And that's it. And she's uh, chucking the vapor. So that's it. We're going to go up top and vape on it and talk some more. All right. <coughs> Excuse me. All right. Now we're back up top. We're going to go ahead and go over this, vape it a little bit, and tell you a little more about it. If y'all have any questions, please post them in the comments below. I'll try to answer as much as I can. If you got any questions, concerns, or any little tips or tricks for me, hell, maybe I can learn something off of you guys. So go ahead. Here we go. We're going to vape on it. 
Tons of vapor, tons of flavor. I got this uh, Doe's version 2 here. She's wide open, as you can see. You can see the coils lined up perfectly. That's how you're going to want it when you put your top cap on. You're going to want to put your top cap directly over them coils, so that way you get the most airflow. Um, to me, personally, airflow is essential. i got to have a ton of airflow. That's why I like these chuff caps. As you can see, I got I got other RDAs, like the Doge here. I use the big, fat chuff caps on them. That's just how I like it. I like nice, airy, cool flows. For you guys that like a little bit warmer, you can always take them and close off the airflow just a little bit, and it's it's still gonna it's still gonna chuck the vapor. I mean, it's the beauty of building your own coils. If that's something what you want to get into, I mean, there's tons of flavors out of this. Other than that, I mean, pretty much that's your coil. I mean, I like to vape it wide open. Sometimes I like to choke them off. But uh, if that's something what you're wanting to get into, I mean, this is pretty easy. Anybody can do it. I mean, they make other tools out there. If you're if you got arthritis in your fingers or you just can't grip little things very well like the wire, they make little uh, coil jigs that you can build with. That, uh, they make coil pins where you just twist them. The options are endless. I mean, it, it's it's very easy. We're going to be posting more videos like this. Um, hopefully here soon we'll go ahead and do some little higher end builds for you guys. Um, I know I got a DNA 40 coming here soon, so we're going to be getting into that pure nickel wire builds. Um, other than that, hey, let's vape on this a little bit more and we'll call it a day. Mmm. Tons of flavor. I love it. Tons of flavor. Well, thank you guys. Don't forget, like and subscribe. Thanks for viewing this. Hope you guys have a great day.